Um, gosh. So I guess go back to the skiing a little bit. Um, and you, when you made the U.S. ski team, can you go back to that moment where you were sitting there? I mean, okay, so like for Magic Johnson, when he got signed on to the Lakers and was like, oh my God, here I am. I'm this kid and I'm playing with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Oh my God. And here you are in the gates side by side with Ingelmar or the Mayor Brothers. And you, what was that like your first experience of acknowledging that what to you what was that moment like well um like i said i was eight, 18 and and that's when i raced my first world cup race with all the names you just mentioned yeah. and, uh, and but luckily you know i had dave stapleton and he actually came on stronger earlier he was yeah. better before and but at that, that time 18 we were together race a World Cups together back east. So it was nice to have somebody who was, you know, Dave and I, you know, know each other, you know, we're like brothers, we're the same yeah. age, all sports together. And so we had each other kind of through that. So it was overwhelming for sure, but you know, we it's eye opening to suddenly be, you know, in the same race with with these people that, you know, you idolized and watched on studied on so films. Odomat, you had Stanmark, Steinmark, you had Klammer, you had, I mean, geez, all these guys, you know, the yeah, Mayor was, Brothers. Gustavo, and... Piero, it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was. So obviously, you know, you're there, it's, you're yeah. just, you're pretty unsettled. And then we, from there, flew to Europe. That was the first time I went to Europe at 18. Another mind blowing experience, <laughs> hugely, right? <laughs> So that, that trip was just, you just sort of check the box on experience only. The results had, you know, you were just getting your feet wet and, and, and you know, just getting comfortable. And it, it took, you know, some time to get comfortable. The next year I went over uh, two different tours over there and just became more comfortable with all of it, you know? And uh, I had, I could speak some French because dad's French Canadian. So I could, you know, and once you can do that, you gain confidence, right? It's yeah. fun. Yeah, and then you figure out the food, and you figure out these things, and you start to to enjoy that whole life. And Europe became just I loved it. And so then, when you start to feel more comfortable, then you can execute and you can start compete. You don't feel like, oh my God, these guys are all so much better than me. Now I I, I can contend here a little bit. And you get a result or two under your belt, and that just builds some momentum. Did you did you do you have any experience that was memorable from any of those guys? I mean, is there any time where they kind of sat you down and said words of encouragement or any well, kind of? Yeah. Okay. So uh, at that time, I made the team. We, me, uh, and Phil and Steve, two years older. You know, they're winning World Cups. They're, yeah. you know, so to be, we were so lucky in that you on any day, day training you're measuring up you're not going oh how was my run or whatever i can see well i was this close to a guy that won a world cup last week and I, you know, so that's a pretty good measuring stick that we always had um sometimes too much whereas like you know there, it would have been nice to have a few more in in between you know right. and uh but for us that was great so that you know um so that when we would go back to europe you know and Stemark was a great guy also. Yeah. That guy, uh, just unbelievable in every regard, just uh, the integrity, just a, a, a sweet human being and the most gifted, outrageous skier of all time. And um, so to be surrounded in that, I feel really fortunate to have come through that era. Yeah. That With that group of people. And like I said, Gustavo, Piero, they were still there. So it was just so dynamic and colorful and Klammer was still there and 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 all the crazy canucks and and <laughs> just really and skiing was so you know it was it was really on the up up still yeah. i mean just so popular and and when we went to europe it was you know you don't had there was no communication right you don't call home and right it was you're you wrote you're gone. <laughs> occasionally you're off you're gone for six weeks <laughs> and you just dealt right so your friendships with your guys who are still to this day my best friends in life you know you live you slept next to each other for eight years you know you yeah. you just it through those formative years you know and what you experienced together um was it was yeah just super strong it sounds it sounds kind of cool it, like you do get a good bonding period i mean you are you're going basically from 
world-class ski place to world-class ski place and you're just going back and forth and so in a way you're your own support system with your group you know and so you probably did it did really feel like a team thing for a while there you know i mean billy johnson was from this area he came out from here and so it was interesting coming from Aspen and seeing some folks from other places because he, I mean, I know the Mayor Brothers were from Washington, I think, right? Where, yeah, yeah, and actually that's where uh, Johnson was from as well. Yeah, well, he was from, uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, he was from right by Hood River. In the exactly, Washington. and then he went to Academy in Wenatchee before yeah. he made the team. Yeah, Yeah, and I think, I, in, it's funny because I think he's sort of the white ski racer version of Mike Tyson. Like he was getting into trouble, he was kind of, going down the wrong path and skiing kind of pulled them out like boxing kind of pulled Mike Tyson out you know and um but it seemed like Billy it seemed like he was he was he had his moment it seemed like you know yeah he was he was a a freak of nature for sure right yeah. I mean he just yeah. had a strong mind had a you know a will that would and it was odd you know when he'd come to camps and he was pretty good I mean he was he was he wasn't like the mayor's kind of of a downhill where he just took that bet. You know, he was kind of knocking around, doing better and better and better. But a kind of guy that when he got one result that was, when he won Vangen that year was, okay, that, that's what started the whole thing for him, right? So he wins Vangen. He goes, catches an edge, should have gone off the course, out to the spoonies, comes back in and wins that race. It yes. was, that, that, that run still is just, it, it puzzles anyone's mind and that's what that was it he won that one he's like hey i can do this and he, you know it's like he was saying with clomer coaxing clomer at the olympics you know uh you know three weeks later hey uh, i got this nose picker i'm gonna win this i mean he just kept doing that it was so bold yeah. to do yeah. right you just think oh i'm thinking man you were just sabotaging yourself but it just enhanced it enhanced his confidence that's how that's the way he was wired he and was he was an worked. aggressive that's one of the things i learned too is because i didn't quite do ski team i did free skiing i mean you know you just live up there and you know how to ski pretty good um and so i would ski with all the different folks there was always sort of a group of folks that were crazy you know the warren miller types the ones that would go like bill matson yep you know yep. um yep. it was like it, and i i grew up with the little younger kids but they were like that they were the kind of the guys that would go crazy off the jump steeple chase i'm following them all of a sudden whoa i'm flying off a cliff and it felt to me like billy johnson was a little bit like that he was a little on the edge he was yeah. he was always trying to find that edge and trying to carve it back in is what it felt like to me you know yeah. and it's and a, he has a certain he had, mindset he, and he and he had some good handlers right that he trusted a lot he didn't yeah. like he rebelled to to no end but he had a few people tighten his court that would settle him down enough and kept him grooving for a while for, for a while it, right. it's, it kind of blew up on him and he, he could yeah. he was his worst he was his worst enemy yeah yeah but i would say you know so your generation your generation is more when when the big mountain stuff scott schmidt the films on those what those guys were doing yeah. right yeah Okay, so I look at the, the generation before me, those guys paved the way for yeah. me. Those, yeah. You talk about some talent, the, the, but, but they, they had the challenges of the 60s, right? It's coming out of father knows best till to the 60s, and these guys are challenging everything and experimenting with everything, right? Yeah. So a lot of them, you know, there were casualties from those folks, but there was, you know, there was a group of people, you know, Andy, of course, excelled through all of it, got through all that. Yeah. But, but you know, Whit Sterling was another one that was a team, unbelievable at that time. Tommy Simons, uh, my older brother, there was a whole group of that era that were, you know, for us, they, you know, it, whatever we did as the next group of kids in the family who had, the parents that had to already go through that, it was like, Okay, we give. Let's we'll soften it a little bit. So we were able to learn how to navigate through life with a little more moderation and what after what those guys went through. But they were Aspen. Those guys were so talented uh, skiers, full full athletes. And and what was cool for us is, so as I said, we we'd all go at the, up to to the slalom hill and hike before it was before there was a rope tow. So we go up there. That's where the ski club was. And so you're hiking up and skiing the same slalom course with 
with Andy, who's six years older than me, and, yeah. and Tommy Simon is my older brother, Whit Sterling. So you're seeing and you're being exposed to that. It was such a natural uh, environment for learning and pushing the next generation. Plus, what was so cool at that time is skiing was, it was, everyone ski raced, right? And we're all together, you know, it wasn't just, oh, only the elite go go right. to ski racing. It was where, what we all, like I said, it was the season. My, you know, so a lot of my friends, you know, they were, we were all at different levels, but you know, you're going up the chairlift, having a good, you know, with your friend, it didn't matter. So right. I think that, that piece of it has been lost a little bit with just the intensity of, the, probably all, I'm sure it's all sports, right? They've just gotten so specialized and so perfect, right? It's a, and it's, I remember coaching the Aspen Ski Club uh, a couple of years after I retired, I wanted to give something back and I couldn't believe what had changed in junior sports in, in you know, 17 years and wow. just the intensity and, and, and how many parents were actually involved, uh, kind of overly involved, you know, on the hill and all that, you know, and just, just freedom. Too much. The freedom wasn't quite there as as no, in, and 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 especially when when you look at how many people make it in any sport, but skiing, point yeah. zero zero two are going to make it on. So it's about the experience that right. that the individual has. They're outside. They're learning something. They're going to be able to skiing. So beautiful. You can do as a family with four generations together. How many yeah. things can you do like that? Right. right. You can ski with grandpa at ninety. Grandma, I mean, he's Klaus is 104. Right. Okay. And he's still up there, you know. I a mean, pretty good incentive. Pretty nice yeah. thing to be able to do at 104. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I feel like it's interesting. I mean, I felt like I got a shot into that lifestyle through Beth Madsen and through like Monique Pelletier, who went to yeah. two Olympics. And again, it's not you know, it's just just to make it is amazing you know what i mean it's like the result is great if you get great results but just to make it to the olympics is is amazing you know 